Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. So I'll introduce um, Dina Amohi, uh, Pride 2 PhD Fellow, uh, the Yesad at uh, Makere University. My focus for the PhD is really trying to understand repeat adolescent childbirth in Uganda. We want to be able to understand what's the magnitude, what's happened in the last 30 years in the country, and uh, also uh, qualitatively be able to put meat onto the quantitative statistics we shall obtain. Now, as I begin my inquiry, I decided to first look at first birth, that is adolescent birth. And here I'm going to present to you what I've been able to extract from my data source <coughs> about the time trends, the determinants, uh, and terms of uh, first adolescent birth. So basically, what proportion of women uh, get uh, an adolescent birth, a live birth like that? So in my outline, I'll just tell you briefly about why the focus on adolescent birth, and then um, the objectives, the uh, methods, and the results um, that I found. So. Adolescence is really a very important period, as we all really recognize, and uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa, it is a major issue. In Uganda particularly, you find a large part of the population is actually a middle of adolescence, and here I'm looking at uh, 10 to 20, 20 years of age. Childbirth or pregnancies in adolescence are associated with, very, um, with poor outcomes, both health outcomes, social and economic outcomes. But if find in a country like Uganda, adolescent fertility is reported to be quite high. And here, when you look at what I have presented to you there, based on the Uganda Demographic Health Survey that have been conducted over the years, if you look at the figure I have there, the graph I have there, it's indicating to you what proportion of adolescent girls, age 15 to 19 years, have begun childbearing. That is those who have uh, had uh, childbirth or are pregnant at the point of survey. And you realize that in the last 15 years, the figure is reported to have stalled at about one in four girls having begun childbearing. That is the age of uh, 15 to 19 years old. However, this does not tell us the entire story of adolescence. It does not tell us what proportion actually, at the end of the day, end up uh, with a live birth. So what we did is we investigated, uh, for my research, we investigated the time trends and determinants of initiating um, childbirth and adolescence uh, in Uganda. And here I disaggregate the rural and urban women as well. So these estimates that I'm presenting to you are derived from the Uganda Demographic Health Survey datasets. We've got six of them which have so far been conducted from 1988 to the one, the latest uh, being uh, 2016. So this spans a period of about 30 years in the country. And to get these estimates, we took women of the age category 20 to 24 years, whereby at least the recall is, uh, is not so much affected. They can be able to get a better position to remember what happened, and then they are able to give us what happened throughout the entire spectrum period of adolescence. The determinants of uh, this adolescent birth were derived from the 2016 survey, and we used data and those other things. So in the first set of uh, results, I'm sorry I don't have a pointer, uh, try to check IT, I don't have. So when you look at the birth, uh, birth there, this is telling us our story in the last 30 years, and the lower two uh, sections are indicating to you the adolescent birth, whereby we have the lower bar is those births before 18 years, then the middle one is 18 to 19 years. The gray upper uh, is those who did not end up with an adolescent birth. So when you look at this, down here, I have indicated to you the percent change and uh, whether it is statistically significant. So importantly, if you look at that, you will find that the birth 
between 18 to 19 years have not undergone any statistical change over the 30 years. However, first birth before 18 years. So um, when you look at this, uh, okay, let's just go to this which make it much easier for you. When you follow this from 41% earlier on, we have come down to 28%. Uh, percent. This, however, has not really undergone any change. So overall, yes, we do have a decline in adolescent birth in the country. But this, the decline is only explained by the decline in first birth in the younger category. That is first birth before 18 years is what has undergone a statistically significant uh, decline in the country. And you will notice that this decline, however, set in only after the 2000 survey. So we have these last three surveys showing a remarkable, uh, significant uh, change over time. But the initial years did not result in a change. So we have a plateau in there, and then suddenly we come down, and that's kind of significant. So based on that, uh, we said, okay, let's look at the disaggregation, rural and urban. From the year 2000, what happens to the women? So here I have got, uh, this is for the rural women, and then this other section here is for the urban women. And if you look at both, you will see that actually both categories in both residences, there is a significant change, there's a decline. So if you look at the rural women, you will find a similar trend. Between 18 to 19 years, really, when you look at it, we don't have significant declines. But the declines in the rural women still significantly occur in the women who are below 18 years. The same pattern exists among the, the urban women. These are significant uh, declines in there. Of course, you know that the burden is higher for the rural women than for the urban, but the beauty is that in both residences, the problem is actually declining. And I looked at uh, the determinants, and here I took a few uh, potential predictors, uh, determinants of having a little set path. There are those that are missing here, and they are the common uh, predictors, and usually uh, you, you, know, you have things like occupation, marital status, and then education. Those are already known uh, predictors with very high reverse causality here in this kind of data. So I use those which don't really change much. And for the rural women, you will find that at the adjusted analysis, women from northern and eastern Uganda who are less likely to report adolescent birth contrary to what we, we've seen, um, the current information. And then Muslim women, really at, uh, more likely. And then of course we have uh, here wealth, issues of household wealth, whereby, you know, the higher, from the previous quarter, the higher your household wealth, the less you're likely to end up with an adolescent birth. And then of course, earlier age, you know, each year increase um, in, you know, the year, age at first sex determines uh, a lot. Among the urban women, we see something similar, but the only region which is significant here is the northern region. Even in urban areas and from northern Uganda, it is saying, you know, you're less likely to end up in adolescent birth. And then that Muslim religion persists for older women. And then of course, household wealth, urban women is only those in the richest quantile that are less likely to end up in adolescent birth. This is also a universal. Age at first six is a universal um, predictor in the two regions. So in summary, what I have uh, presented to you is that uh, in Uganda currently, um, based on the data set that we have, there is 16 DHS. One in two women have a uh, live birth in adolescence. And, uh, <coughs> This has declined from about 7 in 10 in 30 years. The greatest burden is among the rural women, but we've had significant declines which occurred after 2000, and the declines have occurred in both rural and urban 
women. The decline is because of a decline in first birth in women who are below 18 years. And then the determinants do differ by, by residence. So in conclusion, initial of childbirth and adolescence in Uganda has declined starting from the year 2000, 2000 onwards. And this decline is because of the de uh, decline in women uh, who are below 18 years. So in my next steps of inquiry, what I want to answer is find out what factors are associated with the changes that we are seeing. From 2000 onwards, we've had a decline. But what factors could really have possibly contributed to this? And second, what happens to the women who have first birth before 18 years? And that is repeat adolescent childbirth, which is a cross of the matter for my PhD. And uh, I also want to look at uh, what are the later life outcomes of women with, first ado with adolescent birth before 18 years. Does it really matter? By the time a woman is 40 years, uh, for, to 49 perhaps, did it really matter that she had adolescent birth before 18 years? So I want to analyze that as well. On the issue of um, what happens to women when they've had the first live birth before 18 years, I have already done the analysis and I have a draft manuscript to that, which actually is showing us um, something rather worrying. Whereas with this first birth, we, we can, to an extent, rejoice and say we've had significant declines um, in Uganda from the year 2000 onwards. For those who have the first baby before 18 years, my analysis has actually shown that we are not registering any changes. It, it's stagnant uh, for the last 30 years. So um, those are the things I'm, I'm you know, still looking at and continuing to look at. So thank you very much. I'm talking about this